Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and this uh, special unboxing episode. So I got this package in the mail today and uh, right away I picked it up and went straight home to film this uh, unboxing and uh, yeah, this is the Amiga 500 Mini or the A500 Mini. Unfortunately I am not as lucky as uh, some of the bigger YouTubers that I uh, got it sent directly home to me. Uh, long before everyone else could get it but uh, at least I pre-ordered it and uh, I think I got it a couple of days before it uh, will arrive in the shops so uh, yeah I'm gonna open it now and I'm quite excited <laughs> what a sturdy box Ta-da! There it is. So I have of course seen uh, some reviews of this already on different channels, uh, but I just thought I'll make a little uh, first impressions um, of my own and share with you guys. I obviously had to pay for it myself and I bought it on the Norwegian shop Elköp and uh, it cost around uh, 1400 uh, nook. That's around uh, 140 euros so let's open it quickly so i really like the amiga and uh, that was one of the machines i had back in the day when i was uh, a teenager i actually started with a laser 200 computer then i moved over to the c64 and finally i got an amiga 500 and uh, by that time i was uh, uh, beginning to study so I mostly use it for schoolwork and learning programming but not uh, <laughs> Amiga programming I learned <laughs> the more theoretical programming using C and uh, basic and yeah like boring programming so I didn't actually learn a lot about uh, the hardware and how to program the Amiga itself and of course I used it for playing games and yeah graphics and uh, watching demos and all those things as well and after the Amiga 500 I moved over to my first PC in uh, 1990 I think so that was a little bit of a history about me now let's open this carefully see what it is inside and uh, see what the uh, serial number I got <laughs> okay look at that it looks uh, amazing actually so small and uh, looks so <laughs> delicate oh my god So the serial number is 27,896. So that's not very low, but uh, at least it's uh, just uh, five digits. Copyright 2022 Retro Games Limited. And for those who don't already know that, they, that is the company that has produced the C64 and the C64 Mini and the VIC-20 Mini or what it's called with the week 20 uh, yeah and uh, I have the C64 but not the other ones and obviously it has a quick guide and uh, hopefully some cables and the controller and the mouse yeah there you go There's the game controller or a game pad and the USB cable and then the mouse. And this is a mouse that you can use on uh, your PC obviously because it is a standard USB mouse. 
but it looks like uh, the Amiga tank mouse although the cable is a bit thinner and it is a little bit smaller we can of course compare and there's a HDMI cable so everything you need in a box except for uh, a power supply but everyone has a bunch of those 5 volts uh, power supplies lying around anyway so here's an original Amiga mouse so it is a bit smaller obviously and uh, not as yellowed as this one but uh, the color should be the same except for the yellowing of course the little quick guide let's take a look in that comes in six different languages how to set it up I don't think I need to read all those details to figure it out but uh, yeah you never know and here I have one of my original Amiga 500s so it fits right there in the corner so I think it's around one fifth the dimensions perhaps so the coloring this is near original Amiga color yeah there's maybe a little bit of a greenish tint in this I don't know maybe it's just the lighting that uh, makes it look like that and look at that tiny little uh, non-working keyboard <laughs> so to use a keyboard you have to connect a regular USB keyboard let's hook this tiny little uh, machine up to my TV and my TV obviously supports uh, HDMI so um, yeah it has its own um, USB-C power input and three USB regular USB ports so hook it up to power and uh, connect the mouse I can use my uh, Commodore 64 mouse pad that looks huge compared to uh, <laughs> the machine <laughs> and the controller so now everything is connected except power so uh, and of course <laughs> the HDMI so all these cables are equally important I guess <laughs> to operate this so it obviously makes a little bit of a cable mess uh, when you have it on a table like this but uh, but that's normal when you deal with uh, retro computers and uh, yeah I think maybe most people who are just interested in playing games on this would have it maybe in its living room and all the cables hidden in a cabinet then a random power supply plug it in set it to HDMI 1 and then switch on the power nothing happened no nothing does it have a power switch oh of course it has it has a power button on the back ah no there's a light let's switch was it HDMI 2 perhaps yeah we're in nice <laughs> So now I'm going to try and uh, tune the camera to get the best picture while filming uh, the screen. I think that looks good. Okay, so uh, there's some setup uh, first of these six languages. The only one I understand is English and a little bit of uh, Deutsch, but uh, the other ones, not so much. So we're in a 50 hertz country here, so selecting that run television test why okay we're in the games menu and there you can hear the music and there's a bunch of games i don't remember how many there are but um, yeah many of these I actually haven't never played I think 
battle chess obviously I have played another world I have played worms I have played of course so uh, let's try the worms been a long time since I um, played many of these games so in this game you can uh, use the mouse to select so let's just uh, start the game right away let's try some training The loading is uh, obviously very fast, space to play. So um, when you're in a game, how do you get the menu? I haven't really <laughs> studied anything about this. Okay, so by pressing the select on the, on the controller, you get the keyboard. Okay, so um, <laughs> bazooka. <laughs> okay. Shotgun UC. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, Worms, the little I managed to play. Pressing the home button takes you back. Let's try Stunt Car Racer. Name. <laughs> okay. Let's write something. So it seems I can't see the whole uh, screen actually. I don't see all the letters uh, to the right. So I obviously have to adjust uh, my TV a little bit. Or maybe there are some options for adjusting uh, the picture on the settings of the A500, I'm not really sure, but let's go ahead and start this. Let's practice. Yeah, and as you can see the text at the bottom is not completely visible. Well, I'm just going to go into my TV menu and uh, adjust the picture a little bit. No, it is actually all the way down, so there's nothing more I can do. I can move it, but uh, I can't shrink it. Okay, then I need to find the menu or setting for that in the A500, see if I can fix that. So here's some display option. It was on fixed size. I set it to screen fit. Well, let's see if that uh, helps. No, still not uh, fully visible. Okay, I'll figure that out later. Uh, let's just uh, try now and uh, drive a little bit. I actually remember this game from back in the day, I think. Yeah, it's a 3D game. Oh, I got the uh, boost. Let's make a jump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did that on purpose. What else do we got? Quack, Pinball Dreams. I obviously remember this game too, I used to play it.
<laughs> oh, I'm so poor at games. Okay. <laughs> Battle chess. Yeah, this is uh, that hilarious uh, version of chess where <laughs> the players are killing each other in uh, spectacular ways. <laughs> Thinking. I just want to see that uh, animation where uh, a player is. Uh... <laughs> yeah, now you get it. <laughs> nice. Uh, let me see if I can take that player. Yeah, let the queen take uh, the horse. <laughs> and obviously I'm gonna lose my queen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, enough with the chess. So uh, that's some of the built-in uh, games. Uh, I'm gonna go into um, uh, the options again, let's see about the, let me set it to moderate zoom, see if I, uh, or fix size again, see if it uh, shrinks uh, the image, and then I could go back to, uh, to battle chess, see if it changes the, yeah, now I can see the whole uh, image, uh, although it is uh, a little bit uh, shrunk down, but that might actually be a better way of uh, playing if I now zoom it in a little bit. But there are of course a lot of options here and uh, let's check out the system options. Power LED, Mimic, Amiga behavior, yeah, why not? Advanced, let's see now if, uh, yeah, that's the version. We can obviously uh, check if there's some uh, updates already to the firmware. There's probably is, I haven't checked. Music volume, and you can use some CRT effect to make it look like a CRT screen. I'm gonna check out that. Let's try another world. Yeah, now you can see that CRT effect. I'm not really sure if I like that or not. You see the, maybe it's not visible in the video, but I see these raster lines. So this is a fantastic uh, game. What is this? <laughs> Was that some copy protection code or what? I don't know. So you can obviously save games and then continue uh, afterwards. So uh, let's try that. If I start uh, Soul and uh, just stop. Oh, that was very loud. This is a game I don't know.
Haha, <laughs> this looks rather nice. Lots of candies. So now let's see if I... How do I save? So now I press A to save. And we can uh, play another game and come back and load this one later. Yes. Well, I think that was it for uh, the initial testing uh, here. Uh, you can, of course, load games from uh, USB memory stick. And uh, yeah, it supports uh, VHD load games. So the options for games are enormous, obviously. And also I've seen some uh, has managed to load the uh, workbench on this machine too. That is not possible uh, from uh, the standard configuration uh, that you get in the menu here. But uh, I have heard that with some trickery you can uh, manage to load the uh, workbench. So that's something I'm going to check out later perhaps. Okay, that was it for this uh, quick test of uh, the A500 Mini and uh, first impression is uh, that this is very good, a very nice product and uh, I really like the form factor that it is so small. Hopefully they will make a original sized model with a good keyboard on it that can actually function as a real Amiga 500, that would be very cool. And the mouse feels very nice. I'm actually thinking about using this as my work mouse uh, sometimes. Something there. Yeah, there's some plastic. I didn't notice that. I didn't peel off uh, the plastic. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is definitely a good product. Uh, maybe a little bit overpriced for my uh, taste, but uh, that's how it is nowadays. Electronics are getting uh, more expensive. Alright, that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, rather quick uh, test of uh, the A500 Mini. And if you came he here at random, uh, you should check out all my other videos. I have a lot of uh, retro computer videos uh, in my channel. And uh, if you want to subscribe or hit the like button, I will be very happy. So thanks for watching and a special thanks to my Patreons. Uh, see you. Bye bye.